welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 195th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk about making your dreams come true and what it really takes. But before we get to that, I have a petite plaisir that is timed with this week or this coming Wednesday's uh, annual holiday uh, in the United States, which is Valentine's Day. And so I have a book that I have been reading that I think you might enjoy depending on different factors of your life. And um, I have an exciting announcement about that book as well. So be sure to stay tuned at the end of today's episode when we'll dive into it. But I want to get to the day, to today's topic, which is how to make your dream come true. Five bills to expect. And I put the bills in quotation marks for a reason, and I'll explain that here in a second. But let's get right into this. So the inspiration for today's episode was an individual who had to wait 43 times for her dream to come true. That's right. The 43rd time was the charm. Who am I talking about? Well, you probably already know. It is the currently number one ranked women's tennis player, Caroline Wozniacki. She won her first Grand Slam title with the Australian Open at the end of this past January. Wozniacki, after 43 entries at Grand Slam events, earned her first in 2018 after 12 years on the tour. As Carolyn's and many other successful dreamers have demonstrated upon finally reaching the summit that they had in their sights from the beginning, they demonstrate that it takes time, often more time than one expects upon stepping forward toward their dreams. But it is possible. The mindset that a worthwhile dream will be easy is often understood. Going forward, we hear this, we know this, okay, we got, we, I accept that truth. But what isn't initially understood is what you will have to pay, so to speak, to attain your goal. Much like upkeep on a house, in order to accrue interest, in order to increase the value of your investment, time must pass. As we look at the real estate market today, some will not have to wait long in certain parts of the country, while others will have to wait decades to see a worthwhile increase should they wish to sell for a pretty profit. Along the way of living in our homes, there are certain bills that we expect to pay, and some we don't. We expect to pay utilities, we expect to pay for upkeep of the roof, the siding, etc., but we do not anticipate disasters such as broken boilers or a tree after having been struck by lightning sliding down the side of your home and requiring a tree service to remove promptly from the street. The latter examples were both experienced at my last home that I owned, and the tree service, in my case, was my father. I'm so thankful to him for coming over immediately the next day, even though he lives a couple hours away at the time, to take care of that tree. And I kid you not, that tree was, oh, I can remember that night. It was maybe four yards from my house. It's on my street. It was on my property. It's a beautiful maple tree that had been there for 80 years, and the lightning, I kid you not, struck it. And that strike and that thunder that came immediately after was one of the loudest sounds ever heard. And I am so thankful the tree didn't fall onto the house, but it did slide down it and cause some damage and obviously needed to be removed from the street as well because it was a big tree. But I could not have foreseen that. Who expects that? Now, we can plan and save for these kind of random occurrences, but we don't see them from the get-go. We don't know that we're going to have to face that. We don't know that. Each of these incidents, the ones that we expect and the ones we do not, are bills that must be paid if we want to maintain our home, if we want to someday be able to sell it and receive a return on our investment. Dreamers who set lofty goals are not to be laughed at because what they are choosing to do is courageous as it will require great tenacity, perseverance, and willpower paired with clarity of vision. 
as I will share in today's episode, there will be some bills that must be paid along the way that most likely were expected by the dreamer. But there will also be some bills that cannot be predicted until we set about on our journey. However, hopefully today's list of bills to expect will ease your mind as you run up against each one, reassuring you that such occurrences are not a sign to stop or give up, but rather just par for the course, even though we couldn't have predicted them from the beginning. So when I say bills, it's more of this is the dues. These are the dues you have to pay, but those dues are going to pay amazing, amazing dividends. So your dream is waiting to be materialized. And now you will know what to be prepared for so that you can attain it and not be stopped in your tracks. Let's get into these five bills that you're going to have to pay. Number one, the errant belief that it's not possible. Your dream can't happen. And you're going to have to find the courage to dismiss this belief. Support along our journey toward our dream is vital. However, the catch is that because you are pursuing something that many people have not acquired or attained, you may not have as much support as you would have expected, but fear not. The first foundational form of support begins with you. So long as you have an unwavering determination and belief in what you are pursuing, that will reveal to the supporters that do stand by you to stand tall with you. The supporters that stand with you need not be people who entirely understand what or why you are traversing towards. However, if they know you well, they are confident in your abilities. That's what matters. In other words, it is the quality of support you surround yourself with, not the vast amount of supporters that you will need. Once you are clear as to why you are pursuing what you have set out to attain, The clarity will be the roots for courage to blossom when unknowns and confusing moments arise. So that's number one. Expect that there's going to be a belief that it's perhaps not possible, but it's also going to be expected that you thwart that wrong belief with courage and dismiss it and keep moving forward. Number two, stepping forward without seeing the tangible outcome. No one can predict the future. Even people who are following a prescribed plan of their life based on what society, their family, or their community has modeled for them. They don't know either. (laughs) No one can know for certain what lays ahead of us, any one of us, but we can put the odds in our favor. We can investigate individuals who have, while maybe not having pursued the exact path we are choosing to walk along, have, for example, chosen the entrepreneurial path. We can look to them for the obstacles that they maneuvered around and the outcomes that they attained. Different times combined with different people and talents will render a different outcome each time, but you are the constant in your entire journey. And when you know with clarity where and why you are choosing your path, the outcome doesn't have to be readily visible, but your confidence to step forward does need to be present So that's number two, stepping forward without seeing the tangible outcome. This is what you're going to have to do. And initially, I think sometimes we think, well, if I don't know where exactly it's going to end up or how it's going to work out, then I shouldn't go for it. Well, I would argue if you're still thinking about it, if you've been passionate and curious about this, whatever it is for a long time and you can't get out of your mind, that's exactly why you should step forward toward the unknown. And that's the confidence that you'll eventually keep building upon because you'll have that feeling that just doesn't want to die. It can't, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what you hear from people, it doesn't die entirely. And I think that should be the initial starter flame, as you want to maybe call it, to keep you going forward and that flame will keep getting bigger and bigger and getting more oxygen, so to speak, as you go forward. So that's number two. Number three, you're going to run up against obstacles, plain and simple. This is going to happen. It's guaranteed. But as I shared in my conversation on Afternoon Live last week with regards to sticking with your New Year's resolutions, often the universe is double checking to make sure you indeed want what you say you want. I would encourage you if this is something that you're kind of grappling with the obstacle part of this to have a look at that segment. I provide a link on the show notes, the simply luxurious life 
facebook.com backslash podcast 195. And I talk about it a little bit more, obviously, in the segment. And I also provide a link to the post that um, goes deep into that concept. The truths about making progress in our lives is, is the topic. And this is an inevitable thing that's going to happen as you go along this journey. It will happen. And again, it comes down to your true belief in what you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. If that's clear, then you're going to be able to push through that. That's number three. Now, I want to take a moment to introduce you to this episode's sponsor. I'll be right back. As we move through February, our New Year's resolutions have begun to bear glimpses of what we are capable of when we have a clear intention and are accountable. And for many of us, including myself, one of my resolutions involved my health. And if you too are focused on your health and are looking for an app to help keep you accountable, I have one I'd like to introduce you to. LifeSum. LifeSum is an app that helps people get fit, lose weight, build muscle, or just eat and live healthier, all for the price of a cup of coffee. And as a simple sophisticated listener, you get to pay even less than that. When you download LifeSum, you will begin to be able to easily track the calories you eat versus those you burn, track what you are eating and drinking, track your health habits to see what you are doing that is helping you and keep yourself accountable. And if you want even more in-depth assessment of your health progress, as well as healthy recipes, specifically targeted diets for weight loss or muscle gain, as well as a three-week weight loss program, all you have to do is upgrade to their premium membership. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, you automatically receive 30% off when you sign up at lifesum.com slash simple. No codes, just visit this link and your discount is automatically applied. A detail about the premium program that I appreciate was the benefits of their life score test, which is an assessment of my answers to 41 questions about my eating and exercising habits, which revealed to me where my strengths and weaknesses were. I don't know about you, but I am someone who always begins a new year to see where I can improve. And I always begin with my overall health. The Life Sum app is designed to optimize your way of life to make it healthier and thus make you happier. After all, it is your body and your health, and it is worth investing in. So why not check out the LifeSum app? Visit lifesum.com slash simple. Welcome back. Let's dive into the final two bills we're going to have to pay to reach our dreams. Number four is evolution of your mind and habits. Last week, I took a moment to contemplate what my life was like 10 years ago, and I immediately recognized that I could not have predicted in any way where I am today and what I am doing. It was only nine years ago that I began the blog, but 10 years ago, if you would have told me that I would not only have a blog, but a podcast, a vodcast, and working on my second book while officially setting up my business as a corporation, I would have been perplexed. In other words, I might have said something like, what's a vodcast? (laughs) But in all honesty, though, I really could not have foreseen that. The world has changed so much. Different ways of communicating have evolved so quickly. And so this truth, this bill is an exciting bill to pay because it is growth. It is each of us stepping into our full potential and sharing with the world what we uniquely have to offer. We do not often know what it is the world needs and what precisely we can give when we begin our journey, but we figure it out along the way and we figure out the growth we would like to undergo as well in order to achieve what we see as necessary and possible. So our journey will start dictating to us the skills we need to acquire should we want to keep going. And that's why we can't know that when we begin, but we look back and we're like, whoa, look at how, how much I've grown. And, and that's a really empowering feeling. And there's more confidence that's going to build as well. So that's why when we talked about our previous points, having confidence to move forward with courage, that courage will continue to build. That confidence is going to continue to build to keep you striving forward because the obstacles are not going to stop per se. They're just going to change and you're going to be better able to handle them as you move forward. So that's number four, evolution of your mind and habits. And number five is a trust in your vision that is unwavering. 
I was recently listening to the second season of the podcast Making on WBEZ Chicago. Their first season, as you may remember, focused on Oprah, Making Oprah. And the second season just began, the beginning of this month, focuses on Obama and his years leading up to the presidency. The first episode dives into his time as a community organizer in Chicago and why he chose from that experience to pursue public service um, in office, so political office. His decision was predicated on the reality that in order to help the people in the African-American communities of Chicago and around the country, they needed a voice. From the time in 1984, because he graduated from Columbia University in 1983, upon taking the organizer's job, which paid him, get this, $12,000 a year, through this three-year time period, his purpose never wavered. He just realized he had to change the methods to making the change plausible. You too will adjust as you make your way toward your dream. You will come to realize that the initial approach you began with is no longer serving the purpose you had hoped it would. And so you will tweak your method. So long as you trust your vision, how you change it won't matter or that you changed it won't matter either. What will matter is that you remained laser focused on why you were making the changes. And so that's number five. You have to have a trust in your vision that is unwavering. The word bills is not one we enjoy seeing unless we are the ones being paid. But the truth is that whether we pay with our time, our tenacity, or our money, when we invest wisely with clarity of purpose, the dream will be realized in its own time. So hang in there. And you too, like Carolyn Wozniacki, will find yourself in disbelief, but at the same time reassured that your journey, your effort, and your sincere desire was right on track and on time. Now, I have compiled um, three different episodes from the podcast that are on this topic or similar to this topic, such as that feeling of of awkwardness. How do you walk through that? Because you're going to have that as you're going along this journey, as well as having the ability to choose hope over fear. And I've added another one as well. So you want to check it out. Go to the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 195. Now this week's petite plaisir, I will be sharing in just a moment. I'll be right back. <music> Welcome back. So today's Petit Plaisir is a book called The Love Gap, A Radical Plan to Win in Life and Love. And it's by Jenna Birch. Now, Jenna Birch is a columnist for Yahoo Relationships, and she also has written um, many different freelance articles for a bunch of different publications that you may recognize. And I'll provide a link to her portfolio and you can see all the different articles. I was introduced to her because I read a post on manrepeller.com last month and it is what was intriguing. It was thought provoking. It, it, I was, I found myself nodding my head every once in a while thinking, Oh, maybe she's onto something. And so I looked at her book And I said, ooh, I want that book. I want to talk about it on this podcast. And I'm excited to say that Jenna actually is going to be on our podcast, this podcast, on Monday, March 5th, episode 198. So if you're listening to this after March 5th, you're going to want to tune into that episode because she is going to be a guest on the podcast. But for this week, for right now, as as this goes live, um, I'm just going to introduce you to the book right now. It just came out um, in January, January 23rd. And you might want to pick it up and then you'll get to be able to hear her in March. Now, feel free to send me questions um, that you want me to ask her so I can maybe ask some very specific questions that you want the answers to. But let me just give you a taste of what this book is about. It, It really is in a lot of ways in alignment with the Simply Luxurious Life approach. It's about designing your own love life and thus your own life and not shifting or, 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 or settling or slowing down or putting limits on what you do so that you can step into a relationship of your, of what you've desired. And that's what she cites in the book is that there's a love gap. If we're looking at the male female relationship of uh, preparation, being ready for marriage and, uh, 
the frustrations that women run up against when it comes to finding a mate that wants them as their equal partner, appreciates their work ethic and their desire for having their own career that is in line with their passions. And so I loved that this book for that reason. And I want to take us to a section that she shares um, with regards to um, wisdom for the modern ages. And this is actually toward the end of the book after she's gone through all the details and, and broke it all down for us. But she makes this list of what to do when it comes to building a life and love life that is best suited for each one of us individually. So I just want to list some of the bullet points. And of course, she goes into great detail on each of these. But the first one is never make yourself less to make a man more comfortable. Number two, just like the guys you encounter, it's okay if you aren't always ready for love. Number three, write your own love story. I love that one because so often we think that there's a particular way it's supposed to be or look like the certain timing. Ah, we need to listen to our own inner compass and let them listen to their own compass, whoever our partner is, right? Number four, throw out the old wisdom or at least take a hard look at it under the microscope. Number five, make sure commitment excites you. I hope that's a, that is obviously just a little taste of what this book is about. It is a wonderful resource because what she does is she talks about that it does take two. It's not, there's not one person to blame for not working out. There's not, you're not the only one. If you're blaming yourself, why relationships haven't worked out. It's not, it has to be the right person. It has to be the right person and timing plays a role, but there are so many other things. And she dives deep into that. She also, I love this, Minding the Gap. This is part three of her book and just understanding why that gap exists. And the last chapter is all about her radical plan for love and for life. So the book again is The Love Gap, A Radical Plan to Win in Love and Life by Jenna Birch. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. All right. So make sure to tune in on Monday, March 5th, when Jenna will be a guest here on The Simple Sophisticate. That will be episode 198. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that's a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. And the show notes have the link to the book, her blog, her website, her portfolio, uh, everything we just talked about here, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 195. Now, before I wrap up today, I want to take a moment to give a shout out and a thank you to listener Jack City Kiddo. That is their handle on iTunes. I love it. And they shared a review. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this titled My Favorite Podcast. Shannon's podcast has gotten me through some really tough times and has inspired me to live a more loving, luxurious life. She has totally changed the way I live. Cheers to you, Shannon. And please come to LA. Well, let me know what bookstore you want me to come to. The book's coming out, as you know, in November. If there's an independent bookstore that you love, email me info at the simply luxurious life.com. And I will definitely look into it. I always want um, to meet my readers in person. And I love to travel as you guys know. So feel free to email me. I'm always, always looking for ideas and inspiration as we begin to put the book tour schedule together. If you too are enjoying this podcast and have some time and would like to share why you are enjoying it so that future listeners can see what this podcast is all about, I would greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all those who have taken time to do so. And even if it's just doing a starred review, uh, if you just have only a few seconds, that also helps in the rankings and therefore brings it to the attention of future readers as they're scanning through the iTunes category, looking for something to listen to. All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope Valentine's Day goes well. I don't know about you, but I'm going to go get a facial on Valentine's Day and then snuggle in and just relax. That is going to be my Valentine's Day this week. I hope you have an amazing one as well. And be sure to stop by this Wednesday as I have a holiday theme post planned for our Why Not section. So whatever your relationship status is, I think you might appreciate it. Again, thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful week.
thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the Simply Luxurious Life.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, a modern woman's guide, now available in paperback as well as ebook and audio versions, which are available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon. And to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.